Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY sailboat refit video here aboard good old Athena. Over the last couple of weeks I have reached some important milestones. I've almost finished painting Athena's hull and installed her new rudder. This week is probably going to be a little bit more of a mixed bag. Here on the main bulkhead are all of the tasks I would like to complete before putting Athena back in the water in the next couple of months. All the tasks that have a little piece of blue tape on them are impeded, meaning there is something keeping me from working on those tasks. But as you can see, this one here doesn't have a piece of tape. That is to build the area for the washer and the dryer in the forward cabin. Also, the one through haul I need to be able to finish this task should show up in a few days. It's currently being held in customs. I've also got this manual bilge pump that I would love to install out in the cockpit. And uh, seeing as this is probably going to be the simplest task, why don't we start with this? This is one of the original manual bilge pumps that came with Athena, but it looks to be in great working order, so I'm just going to reuse it. I've ordered a new deck plate kit because the plastic ring that goes on the outside was cracked. The kit came with the new ring and also this delightfully flappy bit here, so I might as well change this too. I haven't fully decided how I'm going to run the hose to this yet, but uh, we'll figure that out once the pump is in place. The pump is going to be located right here where the old pump was also located because, well, the hole is still here. The inside part of the pump is going to be located here inside of what will become my technical compartment. This is one of those times where it would have definitely been easier to do this to people, but uh, I'm hoping a bit of masking tape will act as a second person. Yeah, cramped and uncomfortable. This is definitely a boat project. For the two bottom fasteners, I've used a little bit of butyl tape to seal them. And that poses a little bit of a challenge because I don't want the fasteners to rotate when I'm turning them because that's going to squeeze out all of the butyl. And I am just one person here, so I'm going to have to be a little bit careful. I need to run a hose from the manual bilge pump and into the bilge. But last summer I spent a ton of time reinforcing the structural members underneath the cabin sole. So if it can be avoided, I don't want to drill holes in any of those. I think I've found a route. I'll need about 8 meters worth of hose. I'll order that tonight and then a little bit later this week we'll see if that works out. Let's pop into the forward cabin and get started on the area for the washer and the dryer. The washer is going to go here on the bottom and the dryer up on top. I think the first step here is to see if my mock-ups actually match the size of the real appliances. I've got them down in the workshop. I got the measurements for these off of the interwebs, so uh, fingers crossed. I say fingers crossed because as you might be able to tell if you look up here in the back, it's going to be very tight. Turns out the mock-up for the dryer is too large to fit through the opening into the forward cabin. But that's okay. When I rebuilt the entire deck, I also put in a much larger forward hatch. A hatch that's so big that it will in fact fit a standard washer or dryer, which is about this much bigger than what I've got here. But, and there is always a but, for me to be able to do that, I do need to remove the hatch. It's just uh, barely large enough, the opening. But yeah, it doesn't really seem worth it to do that for a mock-up. It's going to be much easier just to take the mock-up apart and reassemble it. The washer, on the other hand, that little thing will fit through anywhere. The good news is that the mock-up for the washing machine is about half a centimeter higher than the actual washing machine. The even better news is the fact that the mock-up for the dryer is about 3.5 centimeters higher than the actual dryer. So it turns out I've got about 4 centimeters worth of extra room. That is amazing news. I'll modify the mock-up for the dryer so it's a closer fit and then we can go ahead and build the two shelves. Both of the mock-ups are back in place and I know it's going to be hard to see on camera but Back in there, there's now a little bit of room, which is great news. I will mark the bottom of the mock-up here on the main bulkhead, and then we can use that as a starting point. Precision is not super important here, so I'm just going to grab a quick couple of measurements with Mr. Laser. 
This is the piece of plywood I want to use for the shelf. I've cut it to 66 centimeters and a few millimeters. It's going to be a pretty good fit, I think. This little piece of large is going to turn into the aftmost support for the shelf. If I put the support in place first, then I can use that to support the shelf and get everything lined up on the forward side. I'm going to use my two marks from earlier to position the support, and I'm going to subtract the thickness of the shelf. This looks to be the right spot, and then I'm going to check with my digital level. I will screw and also glue this in place with plenty of thickened epoxy. Now it's just a matter of removing all the glorious squeeze out. I think I've got a pretty good rough fit here. Now it's just a matter of trimming the shelf so it matches the curvature of the hull. Where the shelf is sitting right now is as close to level relative to the rest of the interior of the boat as I'm gonna get it. So I've just put a little line over here that I can use for the support for the forward side. And the shelf fits like a friggin' glove. Of course, it doesn't really matter if the shelf fits if the washing machine doesn't fit. So, <laughs> fingers crossed. I think we're okay. If you look down there, you can just see the edge of the shelf, but the leg on the washing machine is a little bit in underneath the washing machine. So I think that is perfect. I've checked the washing machine and that leg is three centimeters from the outside edge, meaning it's gonna fit. It's gonna be on the tapping that's gonna secure the shelf to the hull, but that's okay, it's adjustable, so that'll be fine. I'm starting to lose the light for today, so the very last thing I'm gonna do is just to glue and screw the shelf in place. That way tomorrow I can get that tab in place and put the supports in for the top shelf. In the spirit of a mixed bag video, let's make an abrupt cut to a different subject. This is Athena sail drive. That's where the prop attaches, but this old prop is worn out and I need to replace it. Now, I don't have the new prop yet, but that's okay. Before I can replace the prop, there are a couple of seals I want to replace here inside of the sail drive. This is what those seals look like. And if you guys recall from last week's video, I used a seal that was identical to these. Except that seal was $10, these are closer to $50. Quadrupling the price on a spare part seems about on par for Volvo. Thanks, you greedy, greedy bastards. Had I known the exact size of the seals, I'm sure I could have found them online for a lot less. But I didn't, so yeah, I went with the hyper expensive solution. As with most things I do here aboard Athena, this is gonna be a first for me, but I've been assured that it should be very straightforward. This is the sink anode on the sail drive, and I believe that's the first thing we need to remove. So far, so good. Next up is the bearing housing. I am 99% sure I've already drained the oil out of the sail drive. If not, we should find out in just a few seconds. The workshop manual describes removing the housing bearing using a slide hammer. I don't have one of those, I do have a regular hammer. So I'm hoping just a little bit of light tapping and some twisting will do the same. It does seem to be working. There is just a sliver of daylight coming through there now. There are two O-rings in here, and I think I see the first one, so we're definitely getting there. Turns out I did already drain the oil. There was only a few drops in here, and uh, in my amateurish opinion, there's nothing in here that looks horrible, so that's good news. Those two seals I want to replace should be hiding right here in the bearing housing. If you look at the seals, they are back to back. That is because they have two slightly different jobs. The innermost seal here is keeping the oil in, whereas the outermost seal is keeping the water out. After copious amounts of head scratching and a little bit of brute force, the two old seals were removed. Turns out they come out this way, and to be able to do that, you need to remove this little bearing. I'm gonna attempt to press in place the two new seals. Through the magic of an SD card failure, voila! The two seals are now in place. Before putting everything back together, I need to replace these two O-rings. A generous dollop of some marine grease should limit the chances of me pinching or wrecking the O-rings.
The bearing housing is secured with two bolts and uh, seeing as it's everybody's favorite combination of stainless and aluminum, I'm just going to use a little bit of this Duralac. All that's left now is just to put the sink anode back on. I could have purchased a new sink anode, but it seems like there's still plenty of life left in this, and it is something I can change with the boat in the water. I started out this video by replacing one delightfully flappy doodad, and wouldn't you know it, I've got another delightfully flappy doodad here. This goes onto the sail drive and sits here on the outside. I don't know how important this thing really is because this is not what's keeping water out of the boat. I'm guessing, but I think this guy primarily just keeps debris out of this hole here as well as protect the diaphragm. Yesterday I did a little bit of research online to see what people recommend for adhering this flappy guy in place. And uh, well, there were a lot of different opinions, anything from Sigaflex 292 to certain types of epoxy to contact adhesive. I reached out to my new buddy Jason, he was actually the uh, guy that instructed me in the Perfection Pro application on the hull, and he's done a lot of boat repairs over the years, and he's always had good luck with contact adhesive for these flappy doodads, so that is what I'm gonna go with. Jason said that it's very important that I remove the copper coat where I'm gonna be bonding this guy to the hull in order to get a good bond. Bond. So let's start with a little bit of oh glorious sanding. As you can see here, the barrier coat is exposed, but I don't think I've gone through it anywhere. I've lightly abraded the surface of the flabby bit here, and I think I'm gonna put him in place on the sail drive before brushing on the contact adhesive. It does look like it's gonna rain a little bit later today, but if it could just not rain for 20 minutes, then we should be good. This stuff is called Contact Adhesive 281. I'm pretty sure this stuff is just available here in Denmark, but in case you want to find something similar to this, this is a neoprene-based adhesive, so maybe that helps. I need to make sure this goes on perfect in the first try, because once the two surfaces touch, well, then they're bonded forever. I think that turned out pretty well. I've always been a little bit afraid of contact adhesive because once it's on there, it's on there. You can't really manipulate it or anything, but uh, yeah, this turned out okay. Turns out the last through haul I'm waiting for is not gonna show up this week. It is still stuck in customs. But yesterday, the hose for the manual bilge pump showed up. Don't mind all of the conduit and the black hose, that has nothing to do with this. The plan for the bilge pump is to run the hose underneath the old bottom bunk here, up and underneath the generator, out through that hole, behind the shower, behind the head, in underneath the vanity, underneath the cabin sole, and then from there, straight into the bilge. That is gonna be quite the adventure. I wish there was an easier route, but I haven't been able to find one, so. Let's give this a go. The hose is now just temporarily installed. I've wedged it in place with this other piece of hose because as you can see, there is quite a bit of water in the bilge. Once the bilge is dry, I can do the final installation and uh, not have the hose flapping about. Now the reason there is water in the bilge is because I was painting the hull. That might sound weird, but here in the cockpit there are the two main cockpit drains down here and then up here on the seats there are two smaller drains and I had to disconnect those to paint. So right now most of the rain that ends up in the cockpit actually drains to the bilge, which is temporary and certainly not ideal, but it does mean we have some water to test the pump with. Speaking of temporary solutions, the way the pump drains right now is certainly not ideal either. In the end, it's gonna drain out through the hole that's there or used to be there. I just don't wanna put in the through haul until I'm done painting. Well, it works. Ta-da! That got rid of the water in the bilge, lickety split.
the strainer that's attached to the end of the hose has two little holes in it. I've made myself a little piece of fiberglass that matches up with those two holes. The plan is to glue this to the bottom of the bilge after it's been bolted onto the strainer. Putting this little thing in between the strainer and the bilge might seem like extra work, but it prevents me from drilling holes into the bottom of the bilge. And even though I do have a false bottom in my bilge, I don't want to drill into that and risk water getting into the sandwich construction. I've already cleaned the surface down there, so now I'm just going to very lightly abrade it. I don't need a super strong adhesive bond for this, so I'm just going to use a little bit of Sigaflex 591. It's Plenty strong to secure the hose, yet I should easily be able to remove it again if I ever need to. That looks good to me. Yet again, I've used another piece of hose just to wedge the strainer in place until the Sigaflex cures. Last night off camera, I put in place the two supports that's gonna hold the shelf, that's gonna hold the dryer here in the forward cabin. And it looks like the dryer is going to fit. Behind the washing machine, there's going to be a diesel tank and behind the dryer, there's going to be storage that's going to be accessible from the galley. Before I permanently put the little shelf for the dryer in place, I want to have the chain plates mounted because they're in behind there. And I also want to have that diesel tank in place because access is going to be a lot easier to that area without that shelf in place. Having said that, there is still something here I can take care of and that is to get the support for the washing machine tabbed in place. in place on all three sides and the plywood is thoroughly coated in epoxy. That is about as far as I'm going to get with the area for the washer and the dryer before I've got the diesel tank in place and also before I've got the chain plates in place. The diesel tank is not going to happen until sometime this winter so yeah this is about as far as I can get with the area for the washer and the dryer for now so let's go ahead and just close this task. Like I mentioned I am still waiting for that last through hole to show up that's stuck in customs but that should get here next week. As you can see by the blue tape here, a bunch of these tasks are still impeded, but I have made progress. For instance, the new prop is going to be super quick to bolt on. Everything is ready. It's just a matter of bolting on the prop. The cleats are impeded because of the third coat of paint, but I have gotten the backing plate. So once that third coat of paint is on there, that is going to be very quick. That is also why reconnecting the main engine is marked as impeded because to install the exhaust, I need to finish painting the hull. By exhaust, of course, I mean exhaust through hull. This thing is gonna get through bolted to the hull. So of course, before I can put this in place and connect the exhaust to it, well, then I need to finish painting the hull. I think the chain plate covers have arrived from the laser cutting guy. And uh, well, that was the only thing keeping me back from installing the chain plates. So I could go ahead and do this next week. Like I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, of course, if the weather turns nice so that I can apply that third coat of paint on the hull, that is going to be my top priority. But the weather next week looks kind of, yeah, there might be a good day, but we'll see what happens. So this week did turn out to be a little bit of a mixed bag, but that's okay. I still think I made some good progress. I've now got a functional manual bilge pump. I've figured out the shelf for the washer and the dryer, and the sail drive is 100% ready for the new prop. So I think that's pretty solid progress. Sure, it's not as exciting or visually pleasing as painting the hull or mounting the new rudder, but it's still good, decent, solid progress. And that is the way this project is gonna get finished. I just gotta keep pluck, pluck, plugging away. And on that uplifting note, I hope to see all of you guys back here aboard Athena next week for yet more DIY fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you. I've already thoroughly cleaned the surface down. Oi.
Great. <laughs> I'll just clean it again.